Hey everybody, and welcome to The Void, a show dedicated to filling the void between being an employee and becoming self-employed, between working for yourself and working for somebody else. I'm your host, Mitch Smedley, and I recently made the switch myself. After working in the plumbing industry for about 20 years, I finally decided to start my own plumbing company. Most people refer to starting their own company as taking the leap, as if they're blindly jumping off a cliff and into the unknown. This show is here to help you understand that it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be a leap at all. It can be as simple as taking a few carefully planned steps in the right direction. We'll share with you the process that I use for starting my company, so you too can soon be on the way to starting your very own service-based company. We'll work through some of the common issues that are preventing you from starting your company and filling your own true potential. Let's start off by explaining who I am, what I've done, and why we're doing this. My name is Mitch Smedley. I've been a plumber for about 20 years. And about 18 months ago, I started my own company and I've never looked back. I spent about the last 14 years of my career in some form of management role working for other companies, but I was working for somebody else. I was helping somebody else build their dream instead of my own. I was helping some other company look better to their shareholders. Instead of building a legacy that I could pass on for my future generations, I was helping build a legacy for somebody else. I always had the dream of running my own company one day, but my entire career was spent struggling to develop the knowledge and the courage to make it happen. I was 38 years old when I started my company. You might be 18 years old, 28 years old, 48 or 68. It doesn't matter. All it takes to start your own company is desire. Time doesn't matter. With me today is David. David, introduce yourself. Uh, David Hilton. I've started a couple of companies. Yeah. I wish that when I started, there was something similar to this to help you through the the pitfalls and the challenges. And, you know, I say pitfalls and challenges. I really mean just things that I didn't know. Yeah. And when I hit the Google machine, hey, that didn't come up. Or it did come up and there were eight forums and 72 different answers on those forums. Right. And all that does is confuse you. You know, you need that help. You know, I've started a couple of companies. um, They've been successful, and they have given me a ton of knowledge. And when Mitch asked me to help him do this, I I mean, I was actually very excited to start, you know, hey, I could share that stuff. Yeah. I've got some info that, that could really help some people. We started with two incredibly different backgrounds. You started early and with very little planning and very little preparation. And I started late with tons of planning and preparation. Yeah. yeah. We're both successful. Yep. And uh, so so we're, we bring a really good dynamic uh, against each other of, of the two different views, so to speak. Yeah, different things. I started, you know, I just decided, okay, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Just jumped right in. Right. Did it help me in some areas? Yeah. You know, I'm a go-getter. Just get it done. I'll figure it out. I'll make it happen. Did it hurt me in other areas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wasted money at the accountant, you know, starting an LLC. Oh, wait, I could have just went to the Secretary of State website, done it myself, got my tax ID number. Right. And, and we're going to talk about all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it it just, I mean, it would have been a lot simpler if yeah. I had just known, I mean, just half of the information that we're going to go over. Right. In those core episodes. Well, even as short as two years ago, I didn't know anything about LLCs or S-Corps or insurance or anything like that. And so uh, the the reason we're starting this podcast is because there's a lot of people that are that are handicapped and not not starting their own businesses because of some some fears that they have. And they let those fears stomp on their dreams And, and simple things. Yeah. You know, simple, simple, simple things. Just Very like we talked things. about LLC. Man, yeah. I just don't know how to get started on the LLC. Right. It's so simple. When we start going through this stuff, you'd be like, oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's and, all it took. And some of it's as simple as an LLC. Other of it is a lot of process and procedure stuff and everything else. But yeah. we're going to go over everything so that you can charge into this endeavor with confidence. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I, I'm really excited to get some of the information out there. Yeah. It, it's going to be it's gonna be really good. This, this whole podcast is dedicated to speak to the heart and soul of anybody who kicks ass at their job 
and who aspires to one day own their company. Uh, subscribing to this podcast will help you learn exactly what it takes to transition from being an employee to being self-employed. We're going to cover everything on how to handle money to how to ensure your schedule is always full and to getting yourself in the right mindset because mindset has more to do with it than anything else. Oh man, you've got to develop a different mindset than living paycheck to paycheck. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you've yeah. got to, you really have to just take control of the reins and realize, okay, this is what I am going to do. Right. You know what I mean? You can't just, oh, I'm getting up and I'm going to work today. That's not how it works. Right. Right. Not how it works at all. Yeah. You guys might be asking yourself what qualifies Dave and I to lead you through this journey. And uh, we've been exactly where you are. Me a little bit more recently than Dave. Um, but we've been pumping in those 40 to 60 hour weeks for somebody else and wondering if for a long time, yeah, a lot and, of hours. And, and wondering if we'd be happier working for ourselves. Uh, for me, it was literally two years ago, two years ago, I was working for somebody else and, uh, I, I had been in the plumbing industry for 20 years. I was managing multi-million dollar plumbing departments and I just kept wondering, is it worth it? Who am I doing it for? Who am I doing it for? And, yeah. and surely I could be doing a little bit better and making a little bit bigger impact doing it for myself. Yeah. And so uh, Dave was a little bit on a different spectrum. Yeah, I just, I jumped right in. I wanted to do it, you know, on my own and had just, I had just had enough. Right. And I was like, I'm just not going to do it. Right. You know, you had more patience than I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just jumped in. Now, let's, and we can talk about those differences. You know, by staying in and being a manager of a major corporation, there are things you learn that you can't learn even at a 10 guy shop. Yeah. Yeah, totally. totally. You know what I mean? So, Talk about a couple, just a couple of those things. Yeah. So as a, as a manager of a multi-million dollar company that was actually owned by like a national company, you know, I was privy to a lot of information that's helped me be tremendously successful that I would never have had access to that information working for myself. So I don't regret for a moment waiting until 38 years old to start our company. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, I wish I would have started sooner and all that stuff. I don't regret that one iota because I was putting myself in positions intentionally at these other larger companies specifically to gain knowledge so that I could start our company better. Yeah. And, and when we say, you know, this isn't a boss bashing podcast. Gosh, no. no you know way. what I mean? This is an informational podcast. Yeah. You know, we're not going to come on here and say, oh, don't work for a major company corporation nope. because they're just they're the antichrist no no no, no not at all i don't regret a moment i worked for a yeah. major corporation now was it enjoyable sometimes for, for me mostly <laughs> it wasn't however is going to college enjoyable no other than partying it's not right is going to trade school enjoyable not really so no. there's some things that you have to put yourself through in life in order to come out on the other side with more knowledge and and more success and let's so if you are at a big corporation and you've been thinking about it, yeah, maybe when you start going to work next week or tomorrow or you know after you listen to this podcast, maybe start thinking of what am I gaining? Yeah, here, what information can I take from here? Yeah, you know, and and use later down the road. Maybe that'll help you get through some of those tough days while you're working to have your own business. Yeah, thinking a bigger picture, right? You're, yeah, bigger you know, picture. A lot of guys get focused on, uh, oh, I'm working for somebody else, I'm slaving away for somebody else, and they're making all the money, and they can't think farther than that. Well, yeah, okay, you might be today, but get, make the most out of it. Yeah. Learn, like, do your job, right? But also start becoming aware of what your boss is doing. And, and not boss bashing, but like, Look at the behaviors that he has to do. Look at all the people he has to manage and so forth. Yeah. Look at your boss's boss yeah. and look at all the behaviors he has to do and look at the types of problems he has to solve. And, and if you can start looking in that direction and, and looking at things that apply more to the big picture rather than just how they apply to you and your job, you're going to start developing a lot more curiosities about how businesses run. And that makes, um, that makes those day-to-day -day troubles easier yeah. as you're trying to get to where you're going to. Right. So it, you know, it's not as, you know, sometimes you feel like you're at work and there's just this weight. Oh man, I got it. Maybe try to lift some of that weight yourself by saying, okay, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to prepare myself yeah. for later down the road. Yeah. 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 
So I was doing that intentionally. I was intentionally picking positions at certain companies to gain knowledge that I was not yet privy to. Yeah. And so that's why I started later, and that's why Dave started earlier. Um, we're not millionaires. I, I want to get that out in the clear. Uh, and and, and we're, we're not nationally renowned businessmen and all of that stuff. We're guys who a few years ago were exactly where our listeners are. And why is this important? Because we know exactly what you're going through. And we also know that you have a hard time understanding and listening and actually hearing what some of these multimillionaires have to say. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of very, very successful people out there that talk. They may even have podcasts on entrepreneurship. Um, and, and this is not an entrepreneur podcast. This is a self-employment podcast. And so these guys that have entrepreneur podcasts, they may be millionaires, they may be billionaires. And that's a, that's a challenge. And the reason that's a challenge is because those guys are so successful, they're almost hard to listen to. Um, they're... And, and I don't want to discredit their knowledge at all. The knowledge that they're dropping on their podcast is amazing. However, if you're a guy that's working 40 hours a week and living paycheck to paycheck, a lot of what they're talking about is going to go right over your head. And so this podcast is really important because what we're going to be talking about is is speaking directly to the hearts of the guys working 40 hours a week, but that aspire to do more. Yeah, you don't want it to just be... Um all millionaire all the all the time. Yeah. You know those guys they like you just said, they have a lot of information, but they're not breaking down the step by step everyday process it's going to take you to get started. Yeah. So, and they're not answering the questions of like we talked about the LLC earlier right. or having, you know, even s really simple things like, hey guys, you need to have separate banking accounts yeah, even yeah. before you start. Yeah. You know, simple things. So a lot of, the, uh, again, a lot of their stuff is philosophical. They're going to talk about in, in, in yeah, God, feel God good, forbid feel I ever stuff. use these words unless I'm quoting one of these guys. They're going to say, hustle this and grind that and you got to be prepared to work all this time and all this stuff. And, and yeah, okay. Some of that might be true, but they're, they're speaking in concepts and in theories that, that you have a hard time connecting into actual steps that evolve into you owning your own business. Yeah, for sure. And so, um, you have a hard time believing a lot of what they say, because what they're saying, like, like your income is a fraction of what their income is. And so your knowledge base, which is a kind of a reflection of your income, um, your knowledge base is, um, is a fraction of theirs. And so when they're speaking on all these big concepts and these big theories, it's just over your head, it's like just you said. way over your head. Yeah. So most of their advice is philosophical and inspirational, and it can just skip right into one and, ear and out the other. And some of those guys are trying to sell you stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, most of those guys, uh, so, so not all, so not vet, all of them vet those guys really well. That's a good, that's a good point. Uh, there's a lot of internet gurus out there that, they're selling you multi-step programs or their goal is to sell you this program for how to start this business or how to start that business and all this crap. Yeah, that's not us. And and don't don't just blindly follow those guys. So anybody that you follow and we're not we're definitely not telling you only follow us. Absolutely no, of course not. not. I, There's a lot of good information out there. I have now. a bank of what I call digital mentors, and some of these guys have no clue who I am, but they, they have no clue that they've inspired me greatly. Believe it or not, half of my digital mentors are not even alive. <laughs> and I want to the reason I want to bring that up is because the guys who put out really good information, their information is timeless. And so like one of my, one of my digital mentors, his stuff was from the seventies and the eighties. And so I have to listen to all of his stuff on YouTube and it's literally like YouTube recordings of his cassette tapes. And in, in the middle of the YouTube Track video, a, it'll be like, side B. it'll be like that completes side <laughs> a, please, please flip the cassette over to side B. And, and, and that's all in the recording, but his stuff is so powerful. It applies every bit as much today as it did back then. And it's all it's, it's not going to be our job to recommend who you should mentor to. So uh, we're going to try to... Mentor from? Mentor to? Yeah, is it mentor from? Mentor from, yeah, I guess. So 
you can get inspiration from a lot of places. And so we're going to, a lot of times we're going to refrain from who we got advice from and all of that stuff, because I don't want to steer you in any direction. Um, you got to figure out who works for you. Yeah. We're, so we're more setting you up Yeah, than yeah. trying to push you around. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, um, the, the, the guys that you're researching make sure, or the guys that you're allowing to mentor you, uh, physically or digitally, make sure they've actually done something. Make sure that when you do your research about that guy, that you can find more research about what they've done than the product they may be trying to sell you. We will never try to sell a product. No, we're we're not, not trying to sell anything. We're there. not trying to sell anything. We're a couple of guys who had some really good ideas about how to start companies and and we're, we're self self employment and not just companies. ideas, but went through the hardship to learn the stuff that you're going to need to learn. Right, right. We've done it. That's where our ideas came from. We've done it ourselves, and we've learned the right way to do things and the wrong way to do things. And so we're here to help you start in the right direction and for totally free. And there there isn't one 100% right. This is the only way to do it. Correct. And that's why, and later we're going to have guests. We haven't talked about that yet, but when we have guests on that are, you know, hey, I did it this way. This is how I got through it. Right. And that's going to be extremely valuable. I'm yeah. going to have a different perspective than Mitch had. Yeah. And, and when different topics come up just about savings or setting up, uh, if you have some employees, their retirement or, you know, and these are going to be things down the road, not necessarily in the core episodes, but, you know, the different perspectives are going to give you I don't want to say holistic because it makes me sound like a hippie, but it's going to give you a holistic approach about how can I do it and how will it work for me in my situation. Right, right. So like the company that I started was a plumbing company. However, the process that I developed and used to start that company, that process can be applied to starting any service company. Whether it's plumbing, heating and cooling, electrical, it could be hair care, lawnmower, it could be a lawn company, decking, it, any 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 company where you're providing a service directly to the consumer. Yeah, this will work. This process will not work for attorneys and doctors lawyers office. and yeah. doctors in in more corporate environments. Yeah. Right? We're this talking. Is, we're talking services. Blue collar. Yeah, little, blue collar, blue collar direct to consumer uh, service companies. Yeah, is exactly. what we're what we're talking about. Exactly. So, um, let's take a few seconds and go over the layout of what you're getting ready to subscribe to. We've put together nine episodes that cover some core topics that you're going to need to consider before taking that leap into self-employment. So the remainder of this episode and the next eight episodes, we're going to discuss some of those main issues you're going to need to overcome prior to walking away from your day-to-day job. Those issues are actually different areas of adversity that you will need to overcome. Adversity forges our character. And when we overcome adversity, our character is now improved from where it was previously. So these are nine or these are six areas. Six core core. Yeah, six core areas of adversity that you're gonna need to overcome to develop the character it takes to Let's, start a successful business. We're gonna talk about I'm gonna list them off here, but we're gonna talk about you know, we're going to go into the vision, the dream of the company and cha- and get your mindset right. But after that, it's going to be, you know, personal finance preparation. Where do I need to be before I even think about right. starting the business side of the company? Yep. And then there's going to be business finance preparation. Do I need a loan? Right. What do I need to do to get the money together to start the company? Now, lots of those companies are going to take a little more overhead. Right. Some of them aren't going to take very much. Yep. You know, and, and that's going to be different for everybody. And then systems preparation. Systems preparation is, it's going to it's going to seem like a lot of mumbo jumbo maybe to some people. Yep. At different times, but it's it's really important. Do you want to let's talk about that yeah. before I list the other ones off because those are. Those are the preparation adversities, those first three. Right, right. So the first six episodes of the of the nine yes. core episodes, the first six are on those three steps. Yeah, that's right. So systems prep takes up most of those episodes because it is the most important. Um, a successful business operates 
from several systems that they have in place, several processes that they have in place. And so we're going to go over, the, no, no, again, no matter what service business you're wanting to try and start, we're going to go over all of the systems that you need to have in place in order to su ensure success. Give me a couple of examples of um, system preparation. So D give me a give me a, um, so a, high a level, plumbing. Give me a plumbing systems preparation example. Two or three. I'll do you one better. Um, a high level overview of like what a successful system looks like is McDonald's. Oh, okay. McDonald's has a very exact system for how to cook a hamburger. Right? They've got it down to a science. They know exactly. It, to the penny, order what preparation it costs. too. Yeah, they they know exactly to the penny what it costs. They know exactly the the order that it happens in, and and they know exactly how much time it takes to do. Okay, and so because of that, they can build their business around cooking a hamburger. Right. Yeah. They know that if they cook this many hamburgers in an hour, they're going to make this much money, and they they need to structure their drive through in a certain way and all this stuff. So systems okay. are really really key. I see what you're saying. So in the plumbing world. Systems can be, here's how we handle a phone call from an incoming customer. Systems can be, here's how we discuss possible repair options with a customer. Um, systems can, can also be behind the scenes stuff. Here's how we handle the money. Yeah. Here's how we handle vehicle repair. Here's how we handle uh, filing of work orders so that right. we, if we need to go back, right. this is where it's going to be. We always know where it is. Right. And you know what? System preparation, if you have a good system, you don't have to constantly be thinking about every little aspect. Yeah. Because if it's if it's in a system and you know where it's going to be, then when you need to recall that information, boom, there you got it. Right, right, right. If you don't have proper systems in place, then you're going to spend most of your day putting out fires. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So if you have proper systems and in place. And maybe not fires, but you may waste 30 minutes running around looking for something. Right. Because your filing system was not ready. Right, right, right. So that's why systems prep takes up a lot of those core episodes. It's important. Yeah. So the final three episodes of those nine core We're going to call those the beginning adversities. Yeah. So uh, community involvement work, uh, wake up. Do the work, repeat. Yep. Very important. Yeah. People seem to forget that, hey, after I started my company and I, after a few months I'm being successful, I'm a, I feel like maybe I should take a break. No, you have to keep you going. You got to keep going. Right. You got to keep working. Right. And then the last one's going to be evaluate performance, make adjustments, and improve. Yep. That is extremely important. If you can't take self evaluation and self criticism, and maybe it's not self criticism, maybe I come to Mitch's and say, you know, hey, dude, you should have, maybe you should have done this on that job. Right. Even if he thinks in the back of his mind, David doesn't know what he's talking about. If he doesn't think about it just for a second and think, hey, maybe I could get better. Right. Maybe that is a good idea. That is extremely important yeah. in the growth of personal growth and business growth. Yeah. And if you can't take criticism or, or you can't develop personal criticism, <laughs> then self-employment is not for you. Yeah. Let's just get that out in the open right now. And even if even if you can't even if the criticism is wrong, if you can't handle it, yeah. It you might be in deep trouble. Yeah, being you're able gonna, to identify you, you good criticism from bad criticism. Yeah. You're going to listen to it sure. all, but you're going to take advice from some of it, right? Yeah. So Definitely. Um, as as we go through a lot of these core adversities, you may learn that you've completed some of them, and that's great. That's awesome. That that's just gets you a little great. bit more yeah. a little bit more ahead. Um, it's time in the bank. But um, uh, once we walk through some of the topics, it's going to open up some additional conversations that you're going to have with yourself and with others about things that you need to do in order to take the leap yourself. So we're also uh, another future part of the layout of the show. Once we get past these nine core episodes, um, we're going to flip to a little bit different layout where we do some question and answer stuff where you guys will be able to send in questions to us. I can't wait. And we're going to be able to help you work through some can't of wait. those questions. Um, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring on some guests where we get to talk about uh, other people's uh, self-employment journey. We're going to bring on guests who have started their own companies, and we're going to talk about what they did, what struggles they faced for their unique business, yeah. and and how that applies to, again, these six core adversities. Everything is going to tie back to these six core adversities. And so you're going to realize how important these are. And then when we talk about another person's struggle here or struggle there or whatever, lo and behold, you're going to find that it's because they weren't prepared in one area or another. Yeah. 
or that they, you know, maybe they were prepared, but then they learned something right during that preparation that just as an example, you know, uh, I started an LLC and I should have just started at an S corp. Yeah. You know, I literally had to change like within 30 days, right. You know, Hey, maybe that'll give someone an answer to the question that they have now. Should I do this or should I do that? Right. Right. And we're going to go again, we're going to go over all of that LLCs, S corps, everything. Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) we're going to get into it. We're going to, we're going to shift gears here a little bit and we're going to talk, uh, we're going to go ahead and start talking about your company. However, before we do that, I want to pause for a moment and I want to introduce Marcus. Um, Mark, who's Marcus? Marcus is our producer and (laughs) there he is. He's, uh, he's got a face for radio. So we're doing you guys a favor and he's, he's, (laughs) we we keep Marcus off camera because you know, he's just, he's just ugly. Yeah. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Marcus, go ahead and introduce yourself. How you guys doing? We're Uh, we're doing great. Marcus. Fantastic. Uh, you put him on the spot. He wasn't, yeah, right. he wasn't, he wasn't quite ready. Wasn't ready. He yes. was like, hey, uh, I'm here okay, for a ride. I'll make yeah. sure everything is up to quality. He's actually working. He's not just sitting. <laughs> he's not sitting next to the fo- microphone like this. Right, right, right. He's right, actually right. doing stuff. So. so Marcus brings a really cool balance uh, because he has not yet started his own company. Um, no, I'm sure he's going to have questions. Oh, yeah. Along yeah, the way, and he's going to be like, what? What? You guys are idiots. Or, oh. Maybe these guys know what they're talking yeah. about. Right, right, right. We don't know yet. We're right. going to see. It's right. like live the feedback. The good thing is that I have you guys on speed dial. So. <laughs> right. These guys I'm don't. I'm changing so. my number tomorrow. These guys don't. So. <laughs> I'm changing my number tomorrow. <laughs> um, so now that you guys know Marcus and you've met Dave and you've met me. Yeah, let's get into let's, this let's get bit. into this a little bit. So let's talk about why you might want to start your own company. Okay. A lot of people think that, oh, I want to I wanna make a million dollars. Right. That's the classic thing. I want to become a millionaire. Yeah. Um, so you might look at ha- at another company and how successful their owner is, and you might aspire to taste some of that success. Or you maybe you saw a guy driving a Lambo at the gas station. Wish I had a Lambo. And maybe one day. Or a 488 Ferrari. Right. I'll take whatever they got. Right. You know, whatever they got laying around, I'll take it. Right now I'm looking at it like a nice Chevette. Not even a Corvette yet, but but we're going to get there, okay? So maybe you see a guy pulling in a Lambo, and you think, oh, that's going to be me. I want to do that. Um, your vision for your company is going to determine your level of success. It's going to determine whether you're driving the Chevette, the Corvette, or the Lambo, okay? Um, the strength of your vision is going to be what keeps pulling you towards your dreams and, or, or allows them to slip away. So take a few minutes and picture your vision for what your company looks like. And if you have a hard time doing that, let's give you an example. I want you to picture your favorite stadium or arena or concert hall or racetrack or ballpark, uh, picture a place where that's a large facility where a lot of people gather in unison to enjoy the same thing, okay? While you're picturing that, picture the parking lot. Imagine walking through the front gates. Put yourself in the seats. Stand at the concession stands. Walk the concourse. Where's the big screen? Who's playing? What are you watching? Who are you with? Where's the beer vendor? What are you smelling? What are you tasting? What are you hearing? Man, exactly. Popcorn and a cold beer. Where, Baseball game. Oh, Where are the concessions, right? It's my favorite. It's like a VR. Right so, now. Got, mm. so how do you think VR that... VR goggles on. <laughs> yeah. How do you think that amazing place happened? How do you think it came to be? Somebody had to imagine that great place first. Somebody had to smell, taste, hear, and feel all of these things long before they would come to life. Long ago, somebody envisioned every aspect of this amazing place that you're thinking of. They envisioned every detail so vividly that they would be able to draw a picture of what it would look like. Their vision was so detailed it would transcend their mind's eye and and evolve into drawings that would eventually become a plan for how it was constructed. Long before it was a thing, it was a dream. What if that person just stopped at a dream? This amazing place would have never become to what it is today. Dreams alone don't do anything, not even for the dreamer. 
a dream will a dream alone will forever stay a dream in the dreamer's mind. So what did it take for somebody's dream to evolve into a great event space that you're picturing? It took a plan. A well thought out plan. A well thought out plan. A plan for where to play, a plan for where to eat, a plan for where to watch and where to park. A dream plus a well thought out plan produces a great destination. A lot of us fail to dream big enough. Have you ever wondered why people can why people can emigrate to America with nothing but the clothes on their backs and become wildly successful? While people who have lived in America for years are still struggling to get by, the difference is the dream and the plan. You see, the immigrant had a much stronger dream. Their dream was developed by hardship that they've endured in their home country. Their dream was built on huge possibilities that are only available in America. Their dreams must also include the journey to get to America, which is which is a, a dream in itself, right? The dream ho- within a dream. Yeah. The more hardship a person must overcome to in order to achieve their dreams, it usually results in a higher level of success. So because our character is forged through adversity, the emigrants a lot of times see more success than people who have, have lived here forever because the emigrants have faced more adversity than the people who have lived here forever. So if you're going to be successful, you have to have great character, so you have to overcome more adversity. So right now, you're probably dreaming of starting your own company, but you don't know where to start. You're excited, but you have questions. You probably don't have the money or the desire to buy into a franchise, but you maybe think that that would kind of be cool because they kind of have it all mapped out for you. Well, you're in the right place because we're going to take a journey together over these next nine episodes and then for the whole future of this podcast on exactly what it's going to take to start a company. The ideas that we're going to be talking about are the ideas I used to start my own company just a year and a half to two years ago. So you're in the right place. Uh, The company that I started became wildly successful in the first few months. So this whole podcast actually started uh, from the idea of a book. Um, The company that I started was so successful in the first six months, I thought people need to get this information. And so I came home every night after starting our company and within six months in, and I started writing a book and I was just puking all of my thoughts into my laptop, just everything. And then I started putting a little bit of organization to them and then it kind of evolved into, well, I did this and then I did that. And then it it really evolved into adversity and it was like, okay. What did I have to overcome? What to did get I have to overcome? To where to I am here? right now. Exactly. And so I kind of trimmed it down into these like six areas of adversity. That and we've talked about. And so I wrote this giant book about this. And, I, and then I tabled it for a while. And then I got to thinking, like the people that really need this information, how do I even know they're book readers? They may not be. You know, right? Yeah, I'm and, not a book reader. And, and so like a lot of guys are working away every day and everything else and they got their earbuds in and they're maybe listening to music and they maybe listening to the podcast or whatever. And so I thought there's the medium. That's the best way to get this information, yeah. everybody. So what we've kind of done is we've kind of taken this book and we've shaped it into a podcast. And so if, a lot of times if you see us reading from these papers and everything else, it's because basically I've taken this book and kind of transformed it into a podcast. So yeah. these first nine episodes, you'll see us reading a lot more than you will on well, the later it's episodes. Not, it's not just, we're not just reading because we don't know where to talk or what to talk about, but we don't want to miss certain things yeah. that are important that need to be in there. Yeah. Right? Ul- ultimately, we're going to cover everything that was in this book that I wrote in these first core nine episodes. And so, and in, some stuff I just make up as we go. Well, you're pretty good at that. <laughs> you're, you're actually just, really good at I'm that. Just winging it. So I'm just winging it. So we'll do a little bit more reading in the early episodes than we do in the later episodes. Yeah. So, but that stuff's important. Yeah. I want to. I want to make sure that that point is made. That stuff is important, and that's why. It is read sometimes yeah, because that stuff needs to be explained. Yeah. Yeah. So business ownership is a wonderful destination. It's a wonderful stadium or arena or whatever else that you were just envisioning, right? So business ownership brings freedom and luxuries that you just can't get by working for somebody else. Now, that's not to say it's easy. No, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't make this podcast. Well, if it's easy, everyone would be doing it and we wouldn't have to make this podcast, right? I was trying to not be cliche. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to not be cliche, but... Yeah, exactly. You're pretty good at that. Exactly. So, um, so a common goal of 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 
starting your own business is to become a millionaire, right? Um, but I want you to wrap your head around an idea uh, that may help you understand a lot of the stuff that we're going to discuss in this show. Um, consider that money isn't the purpose of starting your business. Freedom could be a purpose. Freedom, right? So um, uh, consider that that money isn't even the purpose of this millionaire goal that Flexibility. you have. Flexibility. Right. Think about the idea that we're not chasing money, but rather the person that we become along the way. Um, so we're, we're kind of talking about like a millionaire's mindset, so to speak. Um, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to put I'm going to put Marcus on the spot here. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Marcus, would you rather have no business knowledge at all, no millionaire mindset, but have a million dollars or. Would you rather have the mindset of a millionaire, the mindset of, of a guy who can produce pick, wealth pick repeatedly? Give him an example. Just pick, just pick a guy that's a millionaire. I see what you're doing here. Say, say Elon Musk. I hate that guy. <sighs> no, I don't, I don't want to go that high level. Let's, um, let's, let's go with the guy that owns the grocery store in your town. Okay. Would you rather have his mindset? Okay. Because undoubtedly a grocery store owner is going to be a millionaire. Right. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Probably. I know one that is, but right. But I don't know if that's a real thing. Maybe, maybe it is. I mean, and rightfully so. Yeah. I, Generational. I think we know the same grocery store yeah, owner. We do. And well, we're not going to uh, say it is. rightfully. I've had many conversations with them, and that oh, is yeah. an incredibly difficult business with incredibly yeah. small margins. Yeah. So that's they, why it's a family. They business. should be a millionaire. That's right. why they're with the level of work business. they put in. Right. Yeah. They but, do. But they're anyway, always there. Go ahead. But anyway, would you rather? Have zero business sense, zero millionaire mindset, and a million dollars, or would you rather have the millionaire's mindset and no money today? Okay, it's kind of a trick question. I feel. Yeah. Well, the thing is, let's hear what he has. Let's Dave, see what he has to say. David, I know you guys, so I mean, I'm in a sense, I would take the the money. Okay. Have you, he you, has the millionaire mindset. He's gonna, he's gonna take that's the money. Answer. That's a great, you know what I, he's gonna, a he, great answer. So he's gonna take the money and then he's gonna bank on our minds is right. what it, it is. It's about being honest, right? You, let's let's about talk about let's talk about being just successful <laughs> you for just are two, fired. Seconds, <laughs> two seconds. Two two seconds <laughs> off of the show. You know, uh being smart is surrounding yourself by smart people. Mm, so right. you know, that's that's not that's a wrong a answer. Man. That's that's not a wrong answer. That's acceptable. I like, I like that answer. And so there, there's really no right answer to that question, that right? Really, like, that was actually, I, I thought it might we might be going off the rails right. for a second. So, that was actually really good. So a lot of guys would say, I'll take the million and then I'm immediately going to start right, developing right, my right, millionaire right. mindset, right? Yeah. But what, what I'm getting at is the mindset is so key to your future wealth and the future success of your business that I want people to focus more on their mindset than the money. The goal is to is not to become a millionaire. The goal is to become a to, to to develop to develop the millionaire mindset. A byproduct of developing a millionaire mindset is a million dollars. Yes. Okay. So focus on the mindset, and the money will come. Don't focus on the money. Money is like a dog, and if you chase a dog, it'll run. Okay. Mm. I like that example. Yeah, money money is exactly the, like a we dog. We spoke about this in the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh you guys so are pre pep I have me. I have a whole bag of Mitch jewels. Yeah. <laughs> now, in all fairness, most of my jewels, most of my little gems of knowledge have all come from mentor. I, I'm like a regurgitator of great information. I didn't, didn't necessarily just, come just, up with this accept, stuff. Just, Man, right. do you do you did you just see his head inflate like two inches? Oh yeah, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> air head here, air here. No, no. So make sure you have the right goals in mind, right? Let's, let's right. talk so, about millionaire mindset for a second. Yeah, give yeah. me an example of so of what is a millionaire mindset? Think think about this for a second. Life is not designed to give you what you want. Life is not designed to give you what you need. Life is designed to give you what you deserve. Okay. Simply wanting wealth won't bring wealth. Needing wealth or money won't bring it either. Money and wealth gravitate to those who deserve it. It ends up in the hands who have, uh, of those who have worked very hard and very smart. You can't expect a millionaire or a billionaire to hand over a portion of their fortune simply because you want it. The same idea is for need. Just because you need money doesn't make money appear. 
Okay, if a person is wealthy, it's because they've worked very hard and they've deserved to be wealthy. Your business, if it's to be successful, it's because it deserved to be a successful business. Okay, so just because you've put in the time and effort into building systems and processes, but you, you leave out some of these other adversities, you might not see success. You work on all six of these areas. And I can virtually guarantee you're going to be successful. And if you're not, you can send in a question to the show. And I can almost guarantee we're going to be able to pick out where you're falling short. Yeah, break it down. Yeah. Figure out what happened. Yeah. So if you're going to be successful, it's because it's because you rose above want and need and you created a system that deserves success. Okay. So it's been said that if you rounded up all the money in the world and you shared it equally among everybody in the world, it would eventually end up right back in the same hands of where it is now, the same hands that used to hold it. The reason has a lot to do with the mindset of the individuals that make up that story. Millionaires have a mindset that the middle class doesn't. The middle class has a mindset that poor people don't. Let's say something real quick yep. while you're talking about that. I'm middle class. Yeah, okay. I, I am Mitch too is middle class. Now. So we're not, no one's, we're not being preaching. Sliding anyone. Nope. No one's preaching. It's just, they're just facts. So it's just, that's the way it is. Th- I'll say this through the duration of this podcast, it's possible I become a millionaire. And if I do through this podcast, you're damn well sure right that I'm going to celebrate the hell out of that with everybody on this podcast. Millionaire mindset. Millionaire mindset, right? Millionaire mindset t-shirts coming to you soon. There we go. There <laughs> we go. T-shirt, t-shirt. No, we don't we don't sell anything. We no, we get we there it'll sell. be a free t-shirt. Yeah. So free t-shirts. Uh, best questions get t- shirts. You know what? Maybe we'll do that. That's a good, When we start doing questions questions of the week, you get maybe maybe, maybe, we, mil- maybe we evolve into maybe that. Maybe we who, work who into something like that. I like so, that. I do too. I like that. Marcus said he'd pay for the shirts. I oh. heard it. Did you hear it? <laughs> yeah. Marcus is paying Straight for the shirts. Straight out of his paycheck. <laughs> That's right. I like it. So so let's get back onto this idea that, that okay, so we take all the millionaire or all the money in the world, we divide it equally among everybody in the world. We get eventually it's gonna end up right back in the same hands, right? If everybody in the in the planet had an equal amount of money, but they didn't change their mindset, then their spending habits would remain the same. So the poor-minded people would waste their money and on, on, on products that, that provide them temporary satisfaction. The middle-class-minded people would invest some of it and go buy a modest house somewhere. Meanwhile, the millionaires would have the discipline to hold off on spending any of the money, but rather they would invest their time and their share of the money, and they would develop products that provide temporary satisfaction to the poor people, and they would probably invest in real estate systems and everything else and sell homes to the middle class. So... Simply put, if you're bestowed wealth without growing your mindset, your wealth will be short-lived. And that's what you mean when you say the wealthy deserve to be wealthy. Exactly. You know what I mean? If, so, if, if, a, if a kid gets an inheritance and he gets a ton of money, I would say that guy doesn't deserve to be wealthy. Right, and he won't but, be for long. But what you just said, now if he is smart with that money and does the right things with that money— and grows that wealth, right. he deserves to be wealthy. What right. did the good right. book say about the fool and the money? The fool and the money will soon part? Will soon part. Come on now. Right, right. So so focus on that millionaire mindset long before your wealth ever arrives, okay? I do this daily. Uh, I, there's a lot of problems that I come across where I am searching for how would a millionaire answer this? How would somebody who had a million dollars in assets and in the bank answer this question. How and that's w- not always an easy question to answer. Oh boy, it's not either. And and you know, and there is nothing wrong with so say on this show you have a question about that. Right. And when we get to the question and answers, we could answer that. Right. Maybe you go to a mentor like we were talking about earlier. Right. Or and not necessarily a guru from it, but an actual mentor, someone you know is successful and does well with money and say, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Right. Hey, right. what what do you think when you ask for help, you develop a different mindset. Yeah. You know, when you gain that wisdom, you're moving forward. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we're talking about here. Right, right. So, yeah, so getting into that mindset long before the wealth ever arrives allows you to properly handle that wealth when it does come in. Yes. So that's why we're talking about the money isn't the goal. It's the mindset's the goal, and eventually the money's going to show up. Yes. I've never met anybody with a millionaire mindset that didn't eventually become a millionaire. So um, as we wind down this first episode... 
uh, I want to talk to you guys about how these episodes grow and how they develop, right? So if you like what you've heard today and you're excited to hear more, do us a favor and help share this show with anybody that you think you're going to see benefit from. Talk to your friends. Everybody knows somebody who's got um, who's got friends that are wanting to start a business. Share the show with them. And, and I'm not saying like go to your social media page and just post it on there. That's kind of that's kind of fake. Um, send them a text. Send them a link to this show. However you're hearing it, send them a link to the to the show. Right. Um, and um, uh, send it directly to your friends that are that are aspiring to start their own businesses. Um, of course, you'll you'll want to this, subscribe to the show too. But um, I've built my business on creating enough value that people want to help me become successful or help our business become successful. It's the same way we want to grow this podcast. We want to give you guys enough value that you help grow this for us. Again, because we're not selling anything, we're not going to pay to advertise this show. And so it's gonna. This show is gonna grow, and this show is gonna grow nationally and become and become great simply because you guys are doing a really good job of sharing the show. Yeah, natural, right. natural growth. Right. right. The other yeah. thing I want to talk about is there's plenty of room for everybody to start their own company. So yeah, don't that's... don't feel like oh it's lonely at the top or 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 whatever the case may be. Like oh I don't know if there's room for that. There is always room in the market for somebody to come in and kick ass at doing anything yeah so uh don't don't feel like there's not enough room in the market for you to start your own company because there sure is and don't feel like you need to like hide this information from your friend who does the same thing you do a lot share be a lot of my friends also own plumbing companies i own a plumbing company help each other we help each other out all the time when our schedule's maxed i send work to my friends yeah and they do the same and they do the same when i go on vacation i send work to my friends one of my friends was laid up with a back injury. He sent all his work to me. It's the greatest thing ever. So yeah. one of the things you're going to find out the with sense really of successful community yeah. is can be a real powerful thing. Yeah, with really successful people, they want to see other people become successful. And we're going to talk about that in one of the episodes, the con- uh, community service involvement. Yeah, yeah, it'll you know? it'll actually be episode seven, I think, that, yeah. that we're going to talk about community service. So um, as again, as we wind down, do us a favor, help share the show, help share the show, share the show. And, uh, everybody <laughs> have, yeah, everybody have a great week and, uh, we'll see you on episode two. Bye.